We have a walleye here for a skin mount. I'm just going to kind of show you how I pattern them out and I carve the form out for them. Um, I have a piece of cardboard here. Normally I would use like a butcher paper. But I, I ran out of that so cardboard does work on a whim. Now you can kind of see that I did cut the fins off of this. I'm going to be casting them here later. Um, normally I would leave the tail fin on. It just helps to keep the the shape on their tail just a little bit better. And to kind of pattern these things out, I do take a ruler. I'll set it flat on and as soon as it's touching somewhere or the belly right now, I just kind of mark it on the cardboard down below. It just helps me to keep me lined up a little bit better and we'll repeat this the whole way around. Once I have all the marks laid down, I'm just going to kind of connect the dots pretty much. I'm going to try to look straight above it here and just follow them, follow them along connecting the dots and that should give us pretty much a nice side profile of our walleye here. We're just going to make some marks. We're going to mark some of the reference points. Like I marked the top of the head, the back of the gill plate, and I marked kind of the fronts and the back of these fins. We just want to kind of have reference points so when we take our measurements and when we're carving this thing we kind of know where we're at and make sure everything's aligned up on it. I mean you can you can kind of pick your own spots but but you just want to kind of make sure you have a a fair amount of them throughout here just so you know know how to keep everything aligned. Now we kind of want to determine what kind of curve we're going to put on this. Whether we're going to do a forward curve, a reverse curve, or an S curve. Now this one here I'm probably going to end up putting just like a little bit of an S curve on it. So in order to do that, yeah, we're just going to kind of draw the curve that we want. It's just going to draw a line pretty much the length of this fish here. And then we'll end up transferring our our reference points that we marked earlier over over to this. Okay, on that first drawing I'm just going to kind of take my ruler here and I'm just going to kind of draw draw a straight line here on every single mark that we marked earlier. And I will number them along the back just so it's easier for me to keep track of them as I transfer them over. We will now end up transferring these marks that we drew our line to We'll basically go from point A to point B, mark the distance, and then we'll go up to that curve that we drew, and then we'll mark it up there also. We'll just end up repeating this process the whole way down to the tail, and that'll give us the curve that we're looking for on our fish here. And now since each of these marks here correlate to a mark on the fish, we're basically going to take our calipers, we're going to measure the distance at each one of them points, and we're going to transfer those measurements over to our curve pattern here. Yeah, we're just marking the widest point of, of our fish at each one of these reference point marks that we made earlier. That'll just help us in getting the right size fish that we need here. For the most part I kind of just eyeball the halfway mark and then I'll mark each point on each side of this line. I mean, you could definitely take your calipers, measure the distance, and then take a roller and mark each side so that you are definitely even on both sides but you can usually eyeball it and get it pretty close to what you need once that's then transferred over we'll just kind of connect the dots following this curve on the outside and that'll give us our top pattern of this fish here now we want to kind of keep some circumference measurements here on this fish we'll just end up taking our roller here We'll mark it. I usually mark them in millimeters. We'll mark it. Draw it here on our pattern. We'll circle it so we see it here later. And we'll just do that to several different marks that we made earlier. Just correspond to them. And then we'll have our circumferences made for this fish here then. Now we're just going to end up taking our scissors along these patterns and we'll cut them out here. 
This is where paper is a little nicer than cardboard because cardboard is definitely not as easy to cut. And there we have our top profile and our side profile for our walleye. Now I use the foam that you get from the taxidermy supply companies. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my top of my fish and I'm going to kind of determine how much I need to cut. We're just going to kind of cut it close. We're going to end up putting a couple pins in it and we'll mark the top of this fish here. We will then end up taking this to the bandsaw. We're going to end up cutting the top top pattern out. Once that's cut off then we'll kind of place our side profile over top of that and then we will cut off the side and that will get us pretty much the main shape that we want. We now have our form cut out in the bandsaw. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to first we want to mark kind of the center lines. I'll mark the center on the top and the bottom and I'll also mark the center on these sides and then I'm going to pretty much transfer some of these reference points that we made over just so we kind of know where some of the fin groups are are going to be placed once we get get it all said and done. Once we kind of have that all set up what we're going to do we're going to take our calipers here and we're just going to kind of take note of the curves on this fish. If we can slide them on the top here you can kind of see how deep they sit on there. If we slide them down the back you can kind of see where they start to fall off. So you just want to kind of keep in mind those reference points. Keep the thickness on the top and we're going to kind of try to transfer them over as we start cutting into our shape into this fish here. Now when I'm shaping these I kind of take a knife to cut and cut the angles here at first and then I'll end up taking a rasp and then a piece of sandpaper just to smooth it out. But we're going to kind of cut the cut the corners kind of down first and then we'll kind of work the shape in a little bit from there. And we just want to keep in mind with those lines that we drew earlier we want to kind of make sure we're keeping them symmetric side to side. We don't want one side to be more of a curve than the other side. We want them pretty much even on both sides. And we're just going to kind of end up doing this process the whole way using our calipers to compare where we're at mark our, from our reference points that we marked on this form to the fish. Just make sure we're kind of dropping at the same spot and just trying to get everything as close to this fish shape so when we put the skin over it fits perfectly and we'll just work this do this to the top we'll do this to the bottom now the bottom's not going to curve up as much as like as the top would here and once we kind of get it close to the end we're going to take some sandpaper make sure we we have any smooth we don't want any any sharp spots on here because they'll they'll end up showing up through this skin now the the tail I usually always pretty much wait until I get the skin on until I sand it down it's a little fragile so you don't want to you don't want to do that too early and accidentally break it off and I have to try to piece it back in there uh, once we get it pretty close we're going to take circumference measurements that we took earlier off of this fish I mean, we can even take them off of the fish we have laying here now but we just want to make sure that our circumference measurements are pretty much the same as they are on the fish as they are on the carved body here. And once we have our fish pretty well what we want to, I'll kind of hand sand it. I'll use my hand to sand it down just to, if I would happen to have any rough edges that I missed with the sandpaper, this just does help to clean those off. And I will end up um, carving the fin butts out. I'll, I'll end up using cast fins on this thing so I'll kind of leave a little bit of a, a place for me to tuck my fins in once I'm ready to install them. Now we pretty much have our fish pretty much the way we want it to be. 
we're basically ready now to get this fish skinned and preserved um, I will end up cutting I'm gonna do an, I'm gonna do this as an open mouth so I'm gonna have to cut a little bit of foam where the mouth will be if this was a closed mouth I'd be fine to just leave it like this but I will once we finally get to the mounting point I'll end up doing it at that point but here's our fish and we're pretty much happy with it I think